the question then is, you know, does this um, kind of conservative evangelical gender ideal um, it, with all that it's, uh, it entails in terms of sexuality, does this cause evangelical men to be abusive? I actually don't know. I, 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 I'm a historian. I can't, I can't really draw that causal connection or are men drawn to this because they tend to be more abusive. Um, so, I, so I can't, I can't make that assertion, but what I can say is that um, these teachings certainly do inhibit the response of, um, of evangelicals to address, to identify, to, to deal with sexual abuse in their midst. This is certainly the case for survivors, um, right? That they are struggling right. with. What does it mean to, um, to submit to a man who is abusive? What does it mean to submit to this masculine authority? Um, there's so much victim blaming and often self-blaming in terms of, did I seduce him? Did I say something wrong? Was I dressed somehow wrong? Um, and then there is this victim blaming absolutely extends to the community where time and again, we see in cases when sexual abuse comes to light, the community often turns on the survivor mm -hmm. and ends up uh, circling their wagons around the perpetrator, protecting, uh, the man, the witness of the organization of the church. And it really is horrifying to see this, this as a repeated pattern. And, and that ends up being, uh, I think almost like abusive a second time over to yeah. victims as they struggle to come to terms with not just what happened to them, but then how they are the ones who ends up, who end up being ostracized from their communities. And so I do think that these teachings directly impact how communities respond to abuse in their midst.